Are we going to cry now that it's May and now that we are tall and Christmas trees are small? <laughs> and they said it's going to rain today here in Canberra, Australia. But bleh. the sun is out finally. So it's about 15 minutes ago when it just sort of and so I thought I might as well inspect the damage of the rain. But before that, I just want to show you this beautiful red dragonfly. Oh my goodness, so beautiful. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's all red. It's, are you Pachypytum? Yeah, it's Pachypytum. Red angel dragonfly. They're also known by other names, but a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I actually got, well, I bought six before plants and they were small, but a couple of them has got like babies and now they have grown. I actually bought a cluster of three and look at them now, but I have one that I paid through the nose that I bought. Hang on, so this size now, can you see my hand? Okay, so that's nice and big and that one at the top, should I actually pull that out? Hang on. Now this red dragonfly is my oldest. It has already suffered one winter here. So I got this last year. It will be almost a year in my care compared to the other ones that I only bought in... I think September last year or October, something like that. October, I think, last year. So it's like six months old versus this one year one. But this one, I'm sure it will be frost hardy now or should be frost hardy because this nearly died. It all freezed up from the frost. And we didn't even have that cold winter last winter. And next month will be winter. June is the start of winter here in Australia. So, we're gonna move on. But anyway, I just wanna see all the different plants that are here. It's like a wonder to me. So I'm seeing this for the first time, as like most of you. <laughs> because once they grow, it's like, oh, I don't even recognize you. So there's a few different plants here. But anyway, I'm going to put this back. Before we continue, I need some energy. So I'm going to have a sip of my coffee. Ah, beautiful. Now, <laughs> so <laughs> it just rained. <laughs> I'm just standing here. <laughs> this is just on my face. I've shown this so many times on my videos, but I just can't get over it. But then now, this one, I really have to bring this inside because this is just going to die. And that is going to destroy. I kept saying I should bring this inside, but now I'm taking it off. And I'm putting this in my back door. That way I don't forget. Back door. What do I have? Somewhere to hang it up and also... Is that Calicia Rosato Pink Lady or something like that? Anyway, that's just facing the other way. Look, this is already my mother plant, which has so many babies. But then if I put them there together, I won't forget. This bird, <laughs> I bought this like four years ago and I haven't changed the battery and it's still going off. I actually... Hang on, I had it turned off because it annoyed me and then I thought it will be dead by now and so it will only come on when I go past it. But guess what? It just keeps going off all the time. Some plants so here can survive the frost and others won't. This one came from the front yard and I just moved it here and of course it got sunburned but it doesn't matter. That's the only plant I have but it's got a little baby so I still need to grow this into until next year before I could probably see get some other babies but it doesn't matter so that I can chop chop chop. This area now is sort of my hardy zone. This Haworthia which is like Simbriformis I think that can survive the frost and in fact even in summer this thing will actually go beautiful and red and also Agave Filifera that's just a recent purchase when I say recent about three months two three months ago and anyway this one's a sepilia I know they can survive the frost but if we do get say minus 10 so I always check the forecast first before I go to sleep 
at night or in the morning just to make sure they don't freeze up and the popcorn is looking beautiful the uh, teprocactus and also this one Facaria tigrina variegata this is the only three I've got I only started with one plant but this is such an old plant when I say old it's like five years four or five years with me and it's a slow grower and it was in a big pot and I just repotted it so most of these plants now even this one this has been growing this Focaria tuberculosa this has been growing in here for a very 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 long time I've got some in the garden that's out in the open they are frost hardy and sun uh, tolerant they can handle the sun and it's not a problem so basically I call them Armageddon plant now this Adam clavatum that's growing here is sort of a so-so it's still in that pot there plastic pot and I just put it sit it in this terracotta pot that pot belly but it's got a hole uh, in the bottom so that way the water can drain but this is going to experience some hardening this winter because I had this growing at the back in the shade and protected and it's still nice and plump but I want it to be frost hardy so this is the spot I will put it in and that can have some damage or it will have some damage from the frost I'm sure of it but that's one way of hardening a plant so eventually if you you know keep poking it and poking it and poking it it forms a thick callus and becomes hard so plants are the same but it takes time you can't just take a plant out and these are just cactus I'm just you know panning through as I talk to you but anyway this Ionium areum uh, giant pink I have never seen this pink but my friend where I got this from I bought it from had it growing like huge before but she had it growing in sort of a shady area and she protects it from the frost during winter but this ones now in the bottom are recent purchases so this one is a long name is uh, Ionium Arboreum Lotte Ovarigatum Loteo Varigatum, Loteo, Loteo. It's so hard to pronounce all this name. What more you can remember them. After the rain, one of the habits I like, or what I like to do, basically. So this is just sort of a habit that you form over the years of doing things, is I come out here and check which plants have rotted from the rain. So say for example, this one here, this is only a newly purchased plant. So this is apparition and I can see a little bit of rot on that one leaf. But overall, the plant still looks healthy. So being an elegance hybrid, I think I'm sure this is an elegance hybrid already. Elegance are very frost hardy. So this can survive the frost. So I'm just going to remove that thing there I, I have to ha use two hands because this has still no roots but anyway we'll see if I can do the death roll <laughs> okay I can't I need two hands to do this hang on I managed to pull it off but there's still a little bit hanging on in there but that's n doesn't matter but anyway I'm looking around and seeing which plant is going to be needing some transplanting Yes, that's right. So say for example, this one, see, I'm just checking, do you have, no. So if it's sort of tender-ish, that one's got some dry leaves there that I have to remove, but that's fine. That uh, should handle the wet much better, or some plants actually, even though most of these are echeverias, they have different needs. You can't just go across the board and say, oh, it's a chiveria, they like this, this, this specific. No. Every single hybrid and type, or although they come from the same genus, some are much hardier than others. Some requires more watering, and some you can water four times a year. Now, down here, I'll just see that one. Yes, see? My deduction is correct. My West Rainbow has suffered some rotting from here. Do you see that? Now we have to remove that just to stop it and even the top here. B 
because, oops, come on. Okay, anything that's got marked because the birds came here and started slashing <laughs> my plants. So the poor things have suffered, so we have to remove this. So West Rainbow is not very frost hardy as well, by the way. So I have to keep them somewhere where they're a little bit protected. And as far as growing them, the leaves I broke off and look, there you go. It's growing a baby. Are you gonna variegate? Maybe, but mo most likely, maybe not. Of all the West Rainbow that I've grown, I only ever had one that variegated on me, but eventually it actually reverted back to normal Pearl von Nonberg coloring. And speaking of PVN, I just saw something a while ago, which is this one. Okay, I need to see how I potted it up, but it's already uh, sticking out of the pot so this was much smaller only about six weeks ago this just shoot off uh, the red tip silk variegated so now I have to raise this up so that because if I put it down there it's gonna smash up on well it's touching I don't like it when they start to touch because they can say this plastic pot might get frozen and then hit that no it won't <laughs> I'm just kidding just playing but I just need to raise it up so that way when it can grow freely and not being restricted so this one's now this plant I used to have three of them they're all the same plant and it's called oh my goodness ebony cross uh, longissima this one I bought well I got three of them only this is actually part of my Christmas present so five months old with me and one of the babies died but the same plant that part there showing ebony and the other part maybe part of it is the longissima but this one has got no signs at all you would think that is something else that is pachypaitum or something like that so this one but when i got it it looks similar to each other and then now this one changed into something else and it's got some markings on the side that maybe kind of make me think that it doesn't like the too much moisture in the soil so i have to try and remember and keep this dry but if it's raining I can't control it. This no. lot here are my variegated ones that is part of that previous plant I've shown you. So this was also acquired in December and the Victor Cane variegated is now grown into thick cluster. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Look at that. And the ones in the center is actually Sedivaria something elf. <laughs> green elf blue elf my brain's not working yes it is blue elf yeah so and it's variegated one and of course that one is a ronyoni eye and that one there is my darren sienna or darren bergi eye darren bergi eye hybrid now not hybrid variegated oh my goodness so only one leaf showing before and now it's got one two three four one side is variegated showing variegated and these other two plants here they're just normal now this one is a minima variegated but it's just too white that needs more sun so this pot probably because they're all light I might try and give it a little bit more fertilizer but right now it's autumn and a lot of people think that Echeveria are summer growers not so it depends. Well, Echeveris is an Echeveria, so and it's still growing, the Rognonii. And Sedevaria is already a hybrid of Sedum and Echeveria. And the Blue Elf as well is also a hybrid, Sedum and Echeveria. And so the Minima is the only one that's sort of a more natural. Durin Bergi, I think, is also a hybrid i'm not too sure but anyway but it falls under the category of echeveria and when autumn comes or you'd say winter comes they should stop growing not so and you can see that it had too much water because it's bursting see the cracks on the tip of the leaves of that one look at even here look at that so this little pudgy this should be kept dry maybe i will bring this inside but i just have to clean up my <laughs> grow light growing area just to make sure there's no nasties in there uh, mealybug and fungus nest just seems to like being uh, staying indoors during winter but anywho 
I'm just looking again to see, well, um, Dream Queen. I just realized that I have so many Dream Queens, but it doesn't matter. I love the plant. Now, the center one, Red Sun, now here you can see, oh, that one is just falling apart. I think I did, this is before the rain, because we, I had some birds, and the birds came in through here and started attacking a lot of the plants and hang on I was just in a bit of awkward position so I need to adjust but anywho I'm just looking at these plants look so beautiful that is a corduroy anyway this one is something rain <laughs> but that one is oh this is such a slow grower amethystianum so that's only amethystianum I have so it's a little bit like amethystinum lavender pebbles but it's not so it's a Gavoides, that one. Now you look like a dream queen, but you're not. You're a pink sun or something, pink peach. I can see the labels from here. So anyway, oh, so beautiful, oh my goodness. So this Madiba bump and Madiba no bump, but look at the beautiful two bump and no bump. Now this one here already had some plants that I removed and also some plants that sort of died over there but this one is Yukibina you can see that the edges two days ago before the rain this was nice and healthy but then now you can see that it's rotting see look at that so this needs to be cleaned up attended to because it's no good we have to remove all hang on I'll just move my uh, container here and take off all the rotting parts and the center part hopefully will still grow but this is just a matter of a couple of days and that's why it's important that one should really check one succulents regularly if you can't look after them then or you can't check them on a regular basis then one must be prepared to have them died on them <laughs> on one <laughs> now if they die please no cry <laughs> and now i'm gonna say goodbye while i'm cleaning this up so anyway guys that's all i got for this video so if <laughs> anything uh try and develop a good practice of checking your plants but see this one oops look i got a baby removed doesn't matter okay shake it off <laughs> that's already gone because you can see the poor baby already rotted look translucent okay see never mind you can see that it's okay you can't see it but anyway that's translucent already so looks like a little worm now this one to say that Oh, my plant died. Now I'm going to go inside and make a nice hot chocolate and cry. No. Um, I started with one plant. And this is a couple of years ago. But still, look at all the plants that I have here. And to think that this pot, I just planted them and neglected them. Like, like I only watered them the first couple of months of their lives or look after them or check on them but the rest I neglected them so that's when I say one has to be prepared to have your plants die on you if you don't look after them now anyway I'm just proceeding over here you can't see what I'm doing but I'm cleaning up there's another one here this is Crimneria mutabilis which also started from a plant like that big there and then now there's a big plant and I actually propagated a few out of this so I got another part of it somewhere and lots of babies that I already killed. Oh, what's this thing growing here? Oh, look. I just pulled a nice weed. Was it a nice weed or a nice grass? But it doesn't matter. It's all gone. <laughs> Sometimes part of the fun. Oh, see, another baby. Can you see that? I'm just about to pull it off. But anyway, that's all I've got for you on this video, guys. This is my second goodbye. And <laughs> I'm going to continue to clean this out and just go underneath there because if the mouth is open, the hands can't think <laughs> and the hands 
picks up the rogue plant. So, anyway, I'm going to go in and actually finish my uh, coffee here. Look at that. It's already calligulating. Ooh. Oh, yes. Um, this is Echeveria Debbie that's grown under shade. I just put it out here just so I can acclimatize it or acclimate it from where it was behind me under the shelf. So this is growing under the shelf. And this is what this this is one. This one here was my little hang on, I'll move my coffee down and I'll pick this one up. This is a hard grown Debbie. I'm so proud of this Debbie because this came from an ugly Debbie. It used to look like this. <laughs> so from that, which is loved by Mealybug, look, she's still got Mealybug there. And I have grown it from leaves into that beautiful specimen. And that one is in the shade, but the two of them now are my two proudest self-grown Debbie that is just perfection, I reckon. And I actually saw this being sold on one of the Facebook page a couple of days ago as Korean form, but it's just normal form. And because, you know me, because I like to check everything, I wasn't convinced that maybe it's just a fluke. I went and bought another Debbie from someone. There you go. And this is what it looks like compared to that one. So from that to that. And this one is what's available in the market. So anyway, guys, that's all this time really. It's definitely goodbye. I will see you on the next video. So I'll put you back there. And oopsie, I kicked my coffee. But this one now... I have to leave it there to acclimate. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys, and happy Mother's Day. Hope we all get spoiled. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you on the next video. PVN silk variegated. And look, don't look so sad. It's not yet winter. <laughs>